it's it's um we're recording on saturday night uh, and my my family did our family christmas today and um <laughs> this is pretty funny man i found out my my nephew asen he's um yeah, he's fifth grader so he's 10 11 years old i can't remember how old he is um yeah. i found out that he's been listening to the show <laughs> oh wow yeah and uh he he told his mom and dad um that he learned about the different movie or whatever from his uncle Mark. And I was like, wow, I was pretty impressed. And I'm like, um, just don't repeat any language. He said on there. Yeah. And, and you heard on there. And, uh, of course my, my sister-in-law was like, Oh yeah, he, he used the F word. I'm like, Hey, that's not my fault. I mean, <laughs> you know, yeah, maybe I've dropped a few off on the show here or there, but I mean, you know, I didn't know, but, it, but Asin, if you're listening, thank you for listening to the show. Yes, thank you for being a fan. I love you little man. And uh, that's pretty awesome. Actually, um, it actually made me smile. It, it kind of made my day. I was like, that's pretty <laughs> cool um, that my nephew has been listening to the show. And uh, it's, it's just hilarious that he, he that he found it and was listening to it. And uh, and it's pretty awesome. Um, and hopefully you learn something out of it. That's the most important thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, I, right. and I told I told him I would give him a shout out on the, the new episode. So I, he, hopefully he's smiling right now as he hears it. Um, there we go, man. But that's pretty cool, man. Uh, my, my own kids could care less about this damn show. Well, Michael does a little bit. Like he's been bugging me about coming on another episode one day. But uh, but that's pretty cool that my, my nephew uh, was listening to the show. There you go, man. There's, there's faith. Faith in humanity again. That's right. Our yeah. young generations. <laughs> And, um, so yeah, so that was pretty, that was pretty cool. But, uh, this is the Rebel Radio Podcast. This is Mark. This is Matt. And we are, um, man, we are a, a week out from Christmas and, um, a week out from what will be our final episode of the year next week as we'll do our big year ending episode. But, uh, but a lot to get to today. Um, I'm going to save some of this for the news later, but I'm pretty, uh, pretty pissed off at, uh, DC right now and Warner Brothers and, what they're doing over there with hiring James Gunn and, and uh, nothing against James Gunn, man. I, I enjoy the guardians of the galaxy films. Yeah. Suicide squad was okay, but uh, I'm just trying to figure out what's, what's going on. I'm not, I'm not thrilled that uh, they did that shit to my man, Henry Cavill. I mean, to yeah. say, make him announce that you're going to be Superman. Then a couple months later, Oh, guess what? You're not Superman. And uh, we're going to deep dive into that later. Cause uh I have some things to say about this. Um, being a big DC fan that I am, um, not happy. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> and uh, the man, oh, it aggravates. It really does. Um, I mean, we got that teaser, man. Yeah, and it's like, what's the point in the three movies that come out in 2023? Well, I mean, Shazam, Aquaman, and and the Flash. Like, if they don't mean anything towards the future of the DC universe, but is that a cash grab? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, well, like I said, we'll dive into it in a little bit here when we do the news. Um, but before then, how are you, man? Good. Good. I mean, it's just, you know, the, the year is just kind of just plowing along now. Uh, I feel like, you know, you know, not too this long is- ago, we were said two weeks, you know, and it'll be <laughs> Christmas. Now we're, now it's a week. Yeah, this, uh, the choo choo train is going. Blink again, <laughs> Christmas will be here. Yeah, oh, I know it's crazy, man. I am um, thinking about that this week, man. I'll have a fourteen year old a week from now, <laughs> and you know, and wow. his, his birthday is Christmas Eve, and I'm just like, wow, man, he's uh, he's fourteen. He's six months, eight months away from high school. You know, wow. in August he'll be in high school, and I'm like, holy shit, man. It just kind of put it sometimes it's not that you're upset it's happening because you want to see your kids get older and succeed. And, uh, but it just puts your, maybe your, your, your mortality, your, your life and things in a perspective when you have those little moments like that. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. You're just like, man, you know, it's like you said, you blink and it's here, you know, and I yeah. blink and I'm like, Holy crap. Eight months still a, a, a high schooler. And, um, it's crazy, man. And, uh, cause you know, you've, you've, you've been there since the beginning when he was born, you, you know, him. you've got to watch yeah. him grow up and it's like, wow. You know, it's, it's crazy, crazy, man. You, you remember, you think back, it doesn't seem like it was too long ago. Yeah. And, uh, and it really wasn't, um, you know, it's just everything, uh, everything just moves along whether we yeah, stand and, still or not. 
And I'm not one of those parents that go, oh, I can't believe they're that old. I mean, I get, you know, I do understand they get older. It's, it's more just like, uh, like I just said, it just more puts it into perspective, makes you look back and, and appreciate. I think that's a good word to use that you appreciate yeah. the, what, where, how far that you've come as a parent and they have as a kid. And, uh, and, and, you know, and I think that's what it is. It's just more of a reflection of things as they get older. And, uh, you know, so yeah. And, uh, and, and, you know, he, he, uh, he adores you, you know, that. I mean, oh yeah. yeah. And, uh, and he always has. And, uh, so that's, that's good, man. You've, you've been a, you've been a good role model to him too, as he gets older and I try, uh, man. as, as an adult and as a big kid that you are, <laughs> I know you, I gotta, gotta play both, man. I, yeah, I since, gotta find that mix between the two. Yeah. <laughs> since you were here last week, I have probably picked up about eight or nine darts, Matt. <laughs> yeah. So, in the house. I didn't but, start it here for that's okay. Okay. <laughs> or not. <laughs> and, uh, I have one more quick shout out too. And, uh, and she, she might be surprised. Uh, a friend of mine that I, I play uh, star Wars galaxies with, uh, her name is Tracy and, uh, she's going through some tough times right now. And I just want to tell her I'm thinking about her and, and, uh, praying for her, her family and things. So a uh, little shout out to her. Cause I know she listens to the show and, uh, I probably just made her cry a little bit, but when, when she hears this, but you know what? That hopefully they're good tears because I do mean it and hope things are going well for us yeah. through this holidays come. Um, but anyway, so let's get into today's show officially. Uh, download this, man, where we tell people what we watched, uh, streamed, checked out this week. I know I've gone first the last couple of weeks, so I'll let you go first this week, man, because I know, I know you saw the big movie that hit theaters this weekend. I am, I will see it, but it's pro- I'm on vacation after Christmas. I think I'm going to wait and go that week. I'm off, get up early, go to like a 10 a.m. showing to. It's a three hour and fifteen minute movie. So that's like a four hour block of your fucking day you gotta plan, yeah. right? So you know, I think um I'm gonna go that week I'm off and see it. And uh Yeah, man. I uh you know, you definitely wanna try and use the restroom around the credits. Um <laughs> I did have to use it one other well one other time. Um I really needed to go twice, but the second time I had to go, it was like 10 minutes left to go in the film. And I'm not, I've heard the climax is like an hour long. Oh yeah. It's yeah. a, it's a big climax. It's like, you can definitely tell that these are long quarters. You know, they, they, the, the quarters that this film is divided into or is, is, uh, you know, they're pretty, pretty long and pretty, you know, adventure film. That's, it's very much an adventure film. Um, and, you know, and you did, we I don't even think you said we are talking avatar, the way of water, Av- of course. avatar, the way of water. Yes. Um, I saw it in, uh, 3d, um, with the D box seats at, at Cinemark. Um, and you know, uh, I wasn't a huge fan of the 40x seats that I, I used when I went to go see, uh, uh, the, the Halloween ends, but I, I felt like in an adventure film where there's like a lot of flight, uh, and stuff like that, that it could be a, a, a cool experience. And I said, you know, Avatar 2 seems like one of those movies where ha- having those interacted seats, uh, you know, w- would be fun. And they were. They were fun. Um, I had two credits, so I ended up, uh, you know, using uh, some of my rewards points to get a few dollars off. And- what What about the 3D? Is it worth it? Oh, yes. And this Is- film, you know, normally... Uh, it's like hard to follow. Uh, some, sometimes the action scenes are too quick in some of these films or, or sometimes it's just not worth it um, so to get the, 3d. Cause I was thinking the same thing. I have like four or five credits, so it's going to cost me nothing to take the kids to see it. So I was yeah. thinking to pay just a little upgrade and see it in 3d. Cause I, I mean, I don't, I can't even tell you the last time I saw a movie in 3d. It's been a, some years. Yeah. And, uh, cause most like of it. them, most of them weren't worth it. You know, but I remember the original Avatar was certainly worth it. And I know Cameron takes his time with that stuff. So I, I was wondering if it's worth it this time. Yeah. And, and that's how I felt. I felt like, man, it's a James Cameron film. I was like, the the original, you know, the first first film was filmed in 3D. I was like, you know, fuck it. I'm going to I'm going to watch it in in 3D. Um, and you know what? Let's throw on let's on let's throw on the extra effects, you know, <laughs> and right. uh, that's that's what I did. And, uh, man, I enjoyed it. I, and you know, I had Jackie go see it too. The day after I saw it, we both saw it, uh, so we could enjoy it ourselves. And, uh, you know, I watched the kids one day, she watched the kids the next, she agreed on the, uh, on the 3d effect, very much worth it. It pops, uh, you know, the it's, it's right there in front of you. And, uh, because of how the movie is shot, obviously it's a James Cameron film. 
Uh, and you've seen the trailer. It's beautifully, you know, the cinematography is beautiful. Um, and you've just, you got to see it in 3D. Um, but, you know, she said that she could do without the seats. They, it made her feel All like right. she was on an amusement park ride. And she, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that. Through. I think, but I think I will. Um, I think I will do the 3D when I see it, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's definitely worth it. Um, go check it out. Um, I, I, I feel like it's, it's definitely more of an emotional film, um, but uh, still really fun. I don't know. I, I think I may have enjoyed the first film more. I'm not sure. I might, I might be on the fence about, about that. I know I said I enjoyed the first one better on Facebook, but, uh, um, I, you know, maybe it's about even. I don't know. It's, it's hard to beat Avatar. You know, Avatar is a good film. It was, you know, whenever it came out, obviously we know it changed cinema, uh, f- you know, for the better, uh, you know, way people wanted to shoot their movies and, and stuff like that. You know, it changed that, that aspect of it. Um, so go ahead and see it. Um, you know, definitely buy your tickets, uh, see it sooner rather than later, because if you have a Cinemark account, um, you know, you got to use, you got to do your visits before the end of the year so you can keep your platinum status. Uh, and, and keep your, uh, keep your, your rewards and stuff like that. Um, that's why I, I hurried up and saw it. I was like, I don't want to keep my platinum status. I don't think I'm going to make it to platinum though. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you've got, if you've got to go five times, uh, there ain't no, ain't, ain't no doing that. Um, but, uh, man, other than that, I saw a, a few Christmas movies. Um, I saw, uh, watch Christmas vacation. Went ahead and watched that. Uh, and then I watched. What was it? Is that watching all the way again? I think I watched it all the way again. Uh, and then I watched, of course, everyone's you know favorite debate. I watched uh, Die Hard because uh, my son had, you know, never seen it before all the way through. He always just sat down and kind of walked away. Uh, this time I made him watch it all the way through my oldest. And uh, he loved it. Thought it was great. Um and, uh, you know, I thought it was, thought it was one of the best action films he'd ever seen. So he gave me, gave me good answers. Um, you know, I, I will claim him, uh, after all, <laughs> uh, he, he definitely, he's, he's got, he's done two things, right? He cried, uh, when he first saw Terminator two, um, whenever, uh, Ar- Arnold, you know, is, has the self terminate and, uh, you know, he says, I now know why you cry, but it is something I can never do. And uh, he started crying, saying that, you know, Arnold understood and, you know, he understood John. And that was that was touching to him. And I was like, I was like, man, I was like, you know what? What a puss. No, I was kidding. <laughs> I was like, if you're going to cry, damn it, that's not that's not bad. You know, that's that ain't a bad movie to cry to. If you're like, I cry, you know, if you cry in, you know, in the, uh, you know, what is it? Uh, Black Beauty or something. I cried <laughs> watching Black Beauty. Ah, okay. I cried watching Terminator 2. All right. You, <laughs> man, I guess you still keep your man card. You know, uh, it was a manly, manly emotional way. But, uh, but yeah. So I'm going to have to ha- make sure he watches like Rocky all the way through now, now, you know, instead of just watching these little clips, these kids catch online. <laughs> Got to watch Rocky. Asen, take some, take some notes, man. Well, the first Rocky is, first Rocky, I think, is a little harder for a younger kid to watch because it's so yeah. slow. What do you think? Yeah. Three? Start them off on three. Three moves yeah, well, pretty yeah. fast, man. You got yeah, three. three is a little more fast pace. Yeah. yeah I mean, maybe one, two. Though, first one is a slow burn. I mean, two, it's good. It starts you know, off good. But even I didn't appreciate Rocky as much till I was older because it is a slower burn movie. Yeah. You know, all that, uh, um, all that stuff in the street that he, you know, the streets of Philly he's, that he's going through. Um, and it's just funny how they film, film that, you know, they, they didn't even uh, cast people. Uh, you know, to play the civilians when he's running through the town. And uh, there was a guy I didn't even realize he was in the movie through Rocky and orange. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was good stuff, man. Good stuff. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's all I caught this week other than playing more destiny. Um, that's it. Yeah. Um, I watched, um, I watched a couple things actually this week. Uh, I last actually last Saturday, yeah, that was uh, I, after y'all left the house and everything. I stayed up with Wyatt because he wanted me to, and we watched uh, that movie on Netflix. We watched Troll. Um, oh, how uh, was Nor- it? Man. Norwegian monster movie. Uh, 
it's not bad, but it's generic. I mean, it's it's a cookie cutter monster flick. You know, you got the scientist and ah. the military and um the mon <laughs> Wyatt's watching, he's like, Dad, first off, the troll looks like God's or King Kong. And two, he goes, It doesn't do anything, it just smashes stuff. I'm like well, yeah, Godzilla and King Kong just smashed up, and why it's well, yeah, but they do it and it's cool, Dad. I'm like, you're not wrong. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. it's like, um, but for a foreign film, the special effects were were pretty good. Um, I I enjoyed it. I mean, it's something to watch for a couple hours, and it, it was a fun little monster movie. And uh, I think I enjoyed it more just the appreciation that my my seven year old enjoys himself a good monster movie. You know, I think that's pretty cool that he likes that stuff. Yeah, and, uh, so. He stayed up and watched it with me, and um, it, it's fun. It, it's worth a quick watch if you're not doing anything else. Um, uh, and then I also watched uh, – I finally got around to watching the Green Lantern, Beware of My Power, the DC animated film. Uh, I liked it, but it, it's a little messy story-wise. It's um, It feels like – it feels – and we've had a few DC animated films like this where they try to do a whole lot of story in an hour and 20 minutes. Um, this is one of those DC animated films where they try okay. to do a whole lot in an hour and 20 minutes. That's how I felt about Injustice. Like they're trying to do too much in an hour and 20 minutes. It felt really rushed. And that's how this one was. It's like that's a lot of story to tell in an hour and 20 minutes. Um, mm-hmm. But I enjoyed it enough because I, I, you know, we don't get a whole lot of Green Lantern films. So I thought that was pretty cool to see Jon Stewart and be Green Lantern. Um, it just, just like I said, a lot of story in an hour and 20 minutes, but it's pretty good. I mean, uh, you know, it's on HBO Max, so it didn't cost me nothing to watch it, and I had been wanting to see it, so I finally sat down and, and uh, watched uh, Green Lantern Beware My Power. Um, i trying to think. That those are the two main movies I watched this week, and uh, I still watch my weekly Yellowstone on Sunday night. Tomorrow night's the uh, mid-season finale, and uh, then it's taking a break till February, so we'll see how that show ends. And, uh, nice. But, um yeah, that's that's uh, not a whole lot I watched this week, but a couple, I've been, but you know now that baseball season's over, I, I've been on a roll though. I've been watching one or two movies almost every week, so I've been doing pretty good considering you know when it's baseball season, I don't watch as much stuff during the week. You know, I'm watching the Astros yeah. or whatever, but uh, game but, uh, every I've day. Been, I'm I've been doing pretty good lately though. I think that's like about a month now since the World Series is over. It seems like I've watched a couple movies every week. So. Ain't bad, man. That that way uh, you keep your uh, you know keep that repertoire fresh in your mind. Yeah, you know. You know so I'm getting there, and uh, and there's some stuff I'm looking forward. Like I'm definitely going to watch Knives Out when it hits Netflix next week. You know, that's oh yeah. I may not watch it the first night it hits, but I'm definitely going to uh, watch that. And uh, like I said, I'll go see Avatar here, and uh, probably after Christmas. Just uh, I don't know why I didn't get tickets for tomorrow, but now I have too much to do at the house tomorrow, though. Um, so I'm. Uh, I'll go see it after Christmas. That's okay. But uh, let's get into today's featured film. Um, a movie that, uh, from one of the greatest trilogies ever made, <laughs> um, it's celebrating its 20th anniversary. And, you know, when we originally got around to talking about doing the Lord of the Rings, we uh, were like, how do we want to do this? You know, I, I've seen podcasts that do all three in a row, you know, and uh, some podcasts have done, you know, split episodes because these movies are so long and, and uh, and we talked about that one time. We talked about doing all three back to back to back. We talked. Then we were going to do them six months apart. We did fellowship about this time last year, mm-hmm. and then we were going to do the two towers in the summer. Then we were going to finish the trilogy, um, like right now at Christmas. But then, as the year went by, it just kind of made sense to keep doing them on their anniversary. And uh, God willing, we're still podcasting next year. We'll finish out the trilogy with the Return of the King. Um, but if I, I will make this guarantee if something was to happen and it looks like we're going to end the podcast anytime soon, we will do the return of the King before we ended the show. That's right. um, and I'm, and that's not any kind of subtle hint that the show's ending or anything like that. It's just, you know, you just, I'm just thinking and you can't plan ahead. You never know. Yeah. There's um, certain movies we have to do before the show. Yes. You know, fun, um, you know, cause part of the journey is the end. Right. Like Chris Evans put it in, uh, you know, Mom, and we've always Marvel's in game. And you yeah. and me have talked about that. We know, like, if if we were to decide to ever end the Rebel Radio podcast, that we would come up with a plan, and that would be our conclusion. We would come up with five or six episodes of movies that we haven't done, and like, okay, we're going to do these five or six, and that's it in the show. Yeah. But um, you know, and I'm just thinking ahead. But as of right now, about a year from now, we will finish out the trilogy of Return of the King. But yeah. for today, we are talking the Lord of the Rings: The Two Towers. Um, my personal favorite film of the trilogy, just because um, 
you know, in the first film, Peter Jackson creates the world of Middle Earth, and, and it's a glorious world. And in this movie, it just opens up even more to more things. Uh, we see how the battle of Sauron is affecting everyone um, in Middle Earth, and, and we get to witness that unfold before our eyes in the two towers with some remarkable acting in this film. Uh, yeah. I think this might be the best acted part of the trilogy. It's just really well acted. Oh yeah. Um, uh, the incredible music score behind it, some wonderful special effects and one of the most epic greatest battles ever put on screen with the battle of Helm's deep. And, uh, and, and I say that very comfortably because the, and when we get to the return of the King next year, the one thing that bugs me about the return of the King is the, I'm sorry, but the CGI ghosts are pretty fucking awful. That's probably one of the worst parts of the trilogy in the return of the King. You have this movie that wins best picture and then you have these CGI ghosts that are just not very good looking. And it takes me out of the movie when I watch Return of the King. And, and but, but we're not doing that movie today. We're doing Two Towers. And that's why yeah. I like the Battle of Helm's Deep better. <laughs> so just my little rant there. You know? more, more quotable, too. Yes. And it begins. Oh, and let us, yeah. you know, let us be the, you know, that's, and then the, of course, the quote from, you know, I guess whenever, uh, you know, m- maybe uh, Peter Jackson accidentally had to share a bathroom. Uh, with someone, he's like, let us cross swords one last time. Or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, yes, yeah, so I, I use this in the restroom. I had to share it with a friend. We drew swords at the same time. It was great. <laughs> we rode out together. And, you know, we, norm- we normally summarize it, but there's no need to summarize this film. Yeah. Everyone knows it's the middle part of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It's a and, film and that needs I, no introduction. And what I love about this movie is, too, is, be, is the – the journey of the characters through this movie. We we watch Aragorn and Legolas and Gimli and and Merry and Pippin and Frodo and Sam and the and the fellowship all grow so much throughout this film. So and, and I think that's the amazing feat that Peter Jackson is able to pull off in this film with everything going mm-hmm. on around it. You're able to go on this journey with these characters, and none of the characters feel like they're left out. You know, you feel like you're on this journey with all these people, and um, and, and it's amazingly done. Um, and I'd even mention Gandalf and his journey. And, and I was, when I rewatched this week and I, we, we watched the extended version, which is, uh, it says three hours and 55 minutes, but it's really about three and a half. Cause there's almost 25 minutes of credits. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, we, so we watched the extended version, the extended version of this film. It's like, this should have been the version that was shown in theaters, like fellowship. You could argue that you didn't need the extended stuff, you know? Yeah. Fellowship works on its own, even theatrical, but the, the two towers extended edition, is so much better. Um, there's a lot of re-edits in this movie. It's it's probably the most change of the three. There's so much things that are different in this. A lot of re-edits, a lot of cuts, uh, lots more of new dialogue, yeah. more, lots more information, um, a lot more background on why uh, Faramir was hated by his father you know, with that whole cut scene with, with the Boromir in it. And uh, lots of just little things like that. Um, uh, we, we see Eric, like a scene that seems so not important at the time when, when, when they're sitting there on their journey, and the, the, the people rode on to Helm's deep and Eowyn makes the soup for Aragorn and, mm-hmm. and, um, he pretends like he likes it, even though he doesn't. Um, and this scene wasn't in the theatrical version. And, but it's like in that moment, you almost see in Aragorn's face that he realizes like, who he's starting to realize who he is and his, his, uh, his, and that his fate is catching up to him and that he has to be a leader, you know, mm-hmm. and just little moments like that. I really like in this movie. Um, lots of great little moments between Frodo and Sam and, and, uh, and, and, and we see Sam, you know, his journey be really rude to Gollum and, and, and Frodo ask him why. And we start, by the time we get to the end of the movie, we, we realize why Sam is doing this because he loves his friends so much and that he, you know, doesn't, you know, they, they shouldn't even be here, you know, but yet he's going to do whatever it takes to do his part in the great stories that he's heard over the years. And just little moments like that, I think, is what makes The Two Towers such an amazing film. And on top of that, incredible special effects, uh, the the Ents, the Living Trees, it's remarkable you know just th- things like that are so well done and uh and uh i know i'm i'm talking and, and going on and on and and uh, i saw this movie two or three times in theaters man i i mean you know i was when these when this trilogy hit man i was uh, i had never read the books i had nothing you know to uh 
to go by, but the movies look great. I saw Fellowship like four times in theaters. I saw Two Towers two or three times. And strangely, Return of the King I only saw once in theaters, or maybe twice. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. But uh, but I became a big fan of these movies, and uh, and I still like them a lot. And uh, and um, and this one is just just so good. Um, but there's more to say about. It. I want you to want your thoughts, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, saw it in theaters. Uh, I remember they always is. It always seemed to come out like Christmas Eve after. Yeah, the they were always Christmas movies. Yeah, and uh, you know we would open presents, and then me and my cousin would try and catch the earliest showing that we could find. And of course, everything would always be packed. Um, and that was when you had to scramble for seats that were close together. Um, so, I mean, it was, it was fun. Um, uh, just, you know, rushing to that and, and seeing those movies play out on screen, obviously great films, won two Oscars. Um, you know, there's no, no question, uh, their significance. Um, but you know, it's, a it's a movie that, you know, it didn't follow, you know, the book. So you had some people that were upset at the book, you know, uh, like you said, uh, we shouldn't even be there. Um, that's uh, the line from Frodo and whenever he and Sam cross through Oxalarth and they don't even cross through there in the book. So it's a nod, nod to that. So they acknowledge it, but it's, it's just great storytelling, great cinematography. And, uh, you know, J.R. Tolkien's son signed off on it. So, you know, if you're one of those Lord of the Rings fans, just enjoy what you're getting, you know, what yeah. you got. I'm, sh- I'm sure there's a lot of lot to be there's obviously a lot to be proud of in this film. Um, it's highly entertaining. It's epic as hell. There's epic quotes all throughout the film. Um, and then just, you know, so, so much cool stuff. You know, you've got like friggin' 10 memes, uh, out of the, uh, the dialogue from this film, uh, looks like meets back on the table boys. Uh, you know, it's like, may, may, maybe you're, uh, I think, I think I'm, you know, the, if, if you're, ha- you know, it, maybe your hands would find their strength if they grasp their sword one last time. I think people insert random shit and uh, kind of make a, a meme of their own uh, with different stuff. Um, but, uh, but man, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a movie that it has crossed generations, even though it came out in the early two thousands. And here we are, you know, 20, almost 20 years later. And uh, you know, people are still talking Lord of the Rings, still enjoying Lord of the Rings, uh, making t-shirts, uh, you know, and it's, it's still out there and, uh, you know, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be here longer than, longer than us. It was here long before us. It's going to be here long after us. Just one of those, those films. And, uh, you know, I've, I've got to agree. The acting's great. Um, even, even Ebert, uh, who, uh, you know, can be critical at times, just love the acting from this film. Um, and, uh, you know, just the, the battle of Helm's Deep is, it's got to be the best battle in the entire series of films. Um, it's it lasts long. It took long to film. Um, obviously, uh, they even handed out T-shirts saying, oh, "I survived Helm's Deep." You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was what twenty a whole day was worth of footage, right? I yeah, it was like twenty hours. something hours of footage that filmed over hours. three months. Yeah. So you know this they they put a lot of effort into this film, and it shows. Um, you know, the, the fruits of that labor have, have, you know, paid dividends over and over and over again. Um, and, and they'll continue to do so. And, uh, you know, you've got, a you know, with the, with the special editions, I, I think you, that's, that's the only version you can watch. That's the one we're talking about today. Um, you, you find out about Aragorn's origin as a, a line of men who's, who's got, a, you know, abnormally long life. Uh, you find out that he's actually served in battle with Theoden. Um, so, which I think makes it, makes you look at their dialogue a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, you feel, you feel like Theoden doesn't care <laughs> that they right. fought in battle and Aragorn's kind of like, come on, man, not, we fought together, you know, we, we drew our swords together, you know, and then he's just like, Gondor, <laughs> elves. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, he's kind of bitter. Um, right, but he's also not aware that Aragorn is the is the heir to Gondor, though yeah. either. I don't. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think yeah. so. I don't think he's aware until Return of the King. All right. Um, now maybe something in the book says different. I don't know because actually on on the books I've only read the Hobbit and the first uh, the first book. I've, I've right. read the Fellowship. I haven't read Two Towers or Return of the King. Um, I've just read uh, two two of those four. 
um, and the Similarian, but anywho, uh, yeah, it's, it makes you look at that relationship a little bit different. Um, and you know, for, for a minute, I thought Aragorn, I know you said that he was kind of discovering himself. I almost thought like maybe he was thinking about how life would be without Erwin. He was actually cozying up to the idea of becoming, you know, the, the future King of Rohan maybe (laughs) and, and marrying Theoden's daughter. But you know, Erwin's Erwin's Erwin, man. You know, Arwen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Arwen, <laughs> Arwen's Arwen. You know, so you, you can't you can't pass her up. And and he doesn't. He remembers the bond that he made, and he's like, you know what, damn it, I'm not gonna simp over some horseman's <laughs> daughter. You know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna you know, I'm a I'm gonna stick to my guns, and I'm gonna I'm gonna wear this uh the star around my neck, uh with pride. And and I'm gonna I'm gonna die as one of them if I have to. I like that quote. You know, him and Legolas Legolas going back and forth. And he's like, Legolas is like, we're all gonna fucking die. And he's like, Well, then I'm gonna die with them. You know what? Screw you. I'm going out, you know, in a blaze of of gunfire or, or sword slashing, <laughs> you know? Um, so Aragorn's badass. Viggo Mortensen, he just solidifies himself as as this badass actor, and uh, you know we get solid performances and great performances from everyone around. Uh, and and Mark, you're you're absolutely right. Merry and and uh, Pippin, uh, they they freaking take over Isengard, you know, by right. uh, by making Treebeard go the the, the wrong way, and uh, being tricky hobbits. Uh, the closer we are to danger, the farther away we are from harm. Which I think sometimes. Uh, you know, you're that that can be true. You know, the sometimes the closer you are to danger, uh, you know, it works out for you, you know, <laughs> and, and people farther away from it, you know, you don't know how they got affected and you didn't, but uh, but they make it happen, uh, and, and we get a continuance of that in the beginning of Lord of the Rings. Um, I'm now you've got me rambling, I'm I'm, I'm no, good. going off, uh, but this is just one of those films you can you can literally uh, talk about so much uh you know from this film it, it gives you so much um and that's because so much was put into it and uh from from all sides writing directing acting uh everyone brought it yeah well and that's kind of the way i felt over the years you know you said you have these hardcore tolkien fans that complained about the change from the book but i mean there's no doubt that peter jackson and the cast and crew and the actors put all of their heart into this to make the best films that they could. And, um, you know, and, and some of that stuff that's done in the books from what I've read, it just didn't translate well, that necessary changes had to be made. And, and, you know, I'm fine with it. Cause I think it works so well. I mean, this is a remarkable, remarkable movie. Um, I, uh, you know, we haven't even gotten it. To- we haven't even talked about Gollum yet. You know, we get just a brief, little appearance from Gollum in the fellowship of the ring is he's mostly in the shadows. And now in this one, we get this full motion capture performance by the great Andy circus, who is on screen in a motion capture suit or on set, I should say filming with the other actors that they had a pinpoint and, and it, and yeah. they use CGI to put Gollum in there and Andy's voice. And, and uh, it's one of the great motion capture performances that has ever been caught on screen. And, course it would lead to andy playing caesar in the plan of the apes films and he's just one of those great um motion capture actors and he's going on to have quite a good career as a as a face actor too yeah and um and he and he brings smeagol to life um in a way that watching this week i actually thought the cgi still holds up very well 20 years later um it still looks really good on screen he's a truly yeah. creepy weird character um slimy that, slimy that test um that that tests the will of, of Sam and, and Frodo and, um, and e- even Faramir feels threatened by him and wants to just kill him right away until Frodo convinces him that, you know, we, we need him. Um, and, uh, of course we get to the end of the film and we know that, um, Smeagol has other plans, um, for a scene that was originally in the second book, but they moved it to the third movie just cause it made sense. And, um, but that's saved for the third movie as Smeagol tries to use this plan to, uh, get the ring back by having Sam and, and Frodo killed by a giant creepy spider. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and we see Smeagol planning that at the end of this one. Um, and, but, but Andy circus, man, he um, truly brings that character to life. He does, man. And, uh, and he even, he even went so far as to, uh, you know, have a, a fish shaped lollipop 
uh, to, you know, so that they could CGI over the fish and make it look real uh, whenever he's, he's eating the fish. I thought mm-hmm. that was pretty, pretty hilarious. He's just flopping around this fish shaped lollipop in his mouth, right. uh, you know, doing all, I, I can just imagine him like crawling over everything, doing his <laughs> voice. I mean, how do you not laugh? You know, right. at, at, um, whenever you, <laughs> there's probably tons of laughs that happen behind scenes, uh, you know, and uh, I, I, that's, that's something that I think about whenever, uh, uh, whenever, you know, I, we bring up that he was in that, that motion capture suit and it's like, man, how did that look? You know, it'd be, be funny to be a fly on the wall watching him uh, acting out those scenes in yeah. front of cast. Um, and then I know, uh, uh, Oh man, I had I had some note over here, um, and uh, it's it's slipping. Um, but uh, well, yeah, the orc. Uh, he Andy also did the uh, the orc uh, scene whenever the three orcs are are fighting amongst themselves in camp, and mm. I didn't realize that. I thought this it was from the uh, the, the people actually playing the uh, the orcs. Um, so that that part in the camp um, at, at Fangorn. Um, at the Fangorn camp scenes, whenever they say uh, meets back on the menu, boys. Yeah. Well, and then there's also been a lot of people think that they, um, you know, Peter Jackson, there is a lot of CGI in these films for the massive battle scenes, but they also hired lots of extras, you know, almost, almost a thousand extras for, to put in suits and you're making turn into Yurikai. They asked for people that were six foot higher. They couldn't find enough, so they had to hire some. They called them Uruk Lows. Yeah. Over four <laughs> six feet. Um, so they that. did hire quite a few extras for those scenes to give it a sense of realism. And I remember watching a um, a supplement where they what they did was they would take the real actors they they filmed and they would they would see they would almost copy them on screen and move it was almost like doing Photoshop work and they would put those thousand actors behind the other thousand actors and mm-hmm. they have a program where they can make them move differently. So it would turn this battlefield into tens of thousands of people just by basically copy and pasting the real actors into other scenes and just changing their movements. And it's just incredible CGR work done by what I think what digital did these effects um, to give you these massive, massive battle scenes and make them look as real as possible. Yeah, no, they, uh, man, uh, yeah, just, and I remember that's, that's the only reason why these films even got made in the first place is because the, the advancements with CGI, um, you know, be, being able to, to clone those like waves and waves of, of people, um, is, is what, what led to these, these films being greenlit, greenlit. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but man, I mean, and, and obviously successful. I mean, I, I always like to mention how much it made, uh, worldwide, like 900, I think it's like 974 million worldwide. Yeah. Uh, I mean the first, the first day I think at the box office, uh, or two or weekend, I think, uh, it made over, uh, more than its budget back, uh, you know, 94 million. I, I want to say over, over the course of the first weekend, it, it made that back and then some, um, yeah. so obviously super, super successful. Well, and that's another amazing thing. Peter Jackson, convinced new line cinema to make this because he said he could do it on a budget. People thought wasn't possible because there was a lot of talk that this, these film, these books were unfilmable. That they would cost, you know, millions uh, each to make. But Peter Jackson came in and was basically like, you know, I can do all three of these for about a hundred million each. And he did, you know, for the most part pulled off. Yeah. Those with the, I mean, I think one of them had a $125 million budget, but for the most part, he was able to do that because he was a master at using techniques to uh, save budgets. And he, and he also, a lot of this was filmed, um, you know, on, in New Zealand, it was all filmed in New Zealand. So they used real lands. They built a lot of sets. So that saved a lot of money on CGI work and things like that. A lot of these sets still stand today for people to go visit. Um, and, you know, and we, we did avatar last week and these were the movies that made James Cameron convince himself that he could make avatar is when he saw Lord of the Rings films. He's like, okay, technology is finally getting there. Yeah. Um, you know, and so it definitely uh, changed how things were made. Uh, Peter Jackson and Weta Digital created new ways to save on CGI by doing these new programs to make these massive battles. Um, so they were able to come in under on the budgets they wanted to. And obviously the whole trilogy was highly successful. One of the most successful of all time. The movies have more than profited, uh, winning lots and lots of awards. Um, and, uh, and, and I think, I think the, I mean, I texted you. I think 
the reason this might be my favorite movie is just that speech that Sam gives uh, towards the end of the film about uh, we're going to be one of those people they talk about in stories. And it's just a, uh, it's just a remarkable speech. I, I'm not sure if it's in the book. Maybe it is. Maybe it was something that was written for the film. Um, but that speech just solidifies what the whole trilogy is about yeah. in a lot of ways. The, the fellowship, you know, yeah. for the fellowship, um, you know, and I know we, we talked about great performances and, uh, you know, I, I forgot to mention this earlier is the injuries, uh, they, <laughs> they sustained, uh, you know, Viggo Mortensen, whenever he kicks the helmet after he thinks the hobbits have died right before he goes to, to track them, uh, when he screams out in, in anger, um, that's not anger. Uh, that's pain. He, he broke two of his toes kicking that, <laughs> that helmet. Uh, you know, I guess he forgot to wear his steel toes, uh, that day, but he, uh, he carried on and, uh, you know, later let, you know, uh, uh, let Peter Jackson know what had happened. And he, he kept that shot in, uh, because it was like, Oh, this is, this is great. How'd you, wh- what did you do to prepare? He's like, well, you know, I just, I broke my toes. Uh, I just, I just shattered them, you know, <laughs> to, to get that, to get that kind of reaction. Uh, you know, that's how dedicated I am. And then, uh, Legolas, I, I, I want to say, uh, Orlando Bloom fell off his horse yeah. and, uh, and cracked like two ribs or broke two <laughs> ribs, one of the two. And, uh, and then, uh, Gimli, uh, the actor who played Gimli, John, John Reese Davis. Yeah. Uh, he, I think he hurt his knee or he sprained his knee. Yeah. Sprained his ankle, so they're like hobbling around, like uh, three misfit musketeers <laughs> trying to trying to get it done. And, also, uh, yeah, I thought no, that was good. cool. I also really enjoy the the banter in this film, like where Legolas and Gimli are counting how many they kill, um, making jokes about tossing dwarfs, uh, you know. And he goes, "Okay, toss me," because um, because it, it, to me, um, it gives a sense that as serious as this world is, there's still humor in Middle Earth, and they still have fun with, with the, their fights and their battles. And I, I kind of like the, those, those humanizing lines of dialogue in these films. You know, I think they work well. Yeah. And, uh, and, 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 uh, I like, we didn't even talk about Ian McKellen and his performance as Gandalf, you know, that, uh, he comes back as, uh, and, you know, we think he fell to his doom in, in the fellowship of the ring. And we find out early on in this film though, that he was able to, fight off the Balrog and survive. And then we just don't know how he's going to come back. And he comes back as getting off the white and um, becomes a huge hero in this movie. Of course, oh, yeah. we'll have an even bigger part to play in the next part of the trilogy. He's what the kids call OP. He's yeah. overpowered. He's yeah, stronger he than Saruman, man. He, he, he blasts Saruman back and he's, yeah, he cool. ain't even the same zip code as Saruman. Oh man. And, and, and then Christopher Lee, how lucky are we to have <clears throat> gotten Christopher Lee in these films? I mean, you know, and that, to play, to play the great Sar the wizard Saruman. And, uh, he, he's awesome. Um, and, uh, Brad Dorif playing the evil cream of warm tongue, um, whose English accent was so convincing that when Bernard Hill found out he wasn't English, he thought he was bullshit. And he's like, no way you're, you're make you're playing an English, you're playing an American accent now. Right. And Brad Dorif's like, no, I'm American. <laughs> you know, and uh, he thought funny. he was playing a trick on him. Man. I, I thought, you know, most, most of those guys are British, man. Right. <laughs> That's yeah. Funny. Well, and the thing is like Brad Dorf apparently stayed in character or stayed with his English accent when they weren't filming. So people thought he was English. And then whenever they were done filming and he spoke American, Bernard Hill was like, no way, you know, it's like, <laughs> no way, man. So that was pretty cool. Um, man, just an amazing film. Uh, I like this movie a lot. It's, I, I, it's my favorite part of the trilogy. Um, I think because it's the middle chapter and it just, changes the world so much and of middle earth and opens things up, preparing us for the uh, final conclusion and the return of the King and uh, just a good film. I mean, it's obviously an a plus there's no doubt about it. I mean, this is a, a great, great movie. No, it's uh it's, it's obviously a, uh, a Testament, you know, a Testament to, uh, to Peter Jackson and just what, uh, you know, his body of work, and, you know, it was awesome that we, we got to see uh, this film, you know, based off of uh, off of those JR, those books by J.R. Tolkien, um, you know, just brought to the big screen in the way that they were. And, uh, you know, we talk about, you know, cinema changing uh, movies, you know, with Avatar. This was a cinema changing movie. 
Um, and I want to say some more sword epics came after this. I think uh, City of God came came after this. Kingdom of God, Kingdom of King, God, Kingdom of Heaven, Kingdom of Heaven. Yeah, and uh, yeah, probably some others that I'm, I'm oh, not, sure can't remember. But this one was the you know, Kingdom of Heaven was the one that I really remembered. Came in, came on after this. Um, I mean, what what more is there to say about this movie? Yeah, you, you know, if you haven't seen this one, I don't know where you've been, but Watch it, man. Watch this trilogy. Um, watch yeah, have you the, seen the Lord of the Rings trilogy in the last 20 years? You're sitting on a rock. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, and my wife was one of those people until last year. I had to have her watch all three. <laughs> I was like, how did you How did you live this long without watching at least one of these films? Um, <laughs> but yeah, they're all free on, uh, on, well, free with your subscription to uh, HBO Max. They're on uh, Amazon Prime also. And, and on Amazon Prime. So, you know, there you go. Plenty of options yeah. out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Amazing. Can't wait. Can't wait to finish it next year. We're returning the King. Um, so yeah. So let's, uh, let's do some this month in pop culture history since it is the middle of December, almost Christmas. And, uh, let, let's, uh, what happened this month in history in pop culture? Yeah. So, you know, we had just gotten this Marilyn Monroe movie out. So, how better than to bring up that in 1953, Hugh Hefner published the first edition of Playboy magazine, which featured Marilyn Monroe as the magazine's first centerfold. Mm. Pretty strong, pretty strong outing. Yeah. I am. Um, no desire to watch that movie on Netflix. I mean, I thought about fast forward to see, all right. And whatever her name is, you know, naked, but other than that, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. yeah. You can just watch dark water for that. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. There's a couple other ways you can watch her without having to watch yeah. that thing. So, or, or she's uh, not shy. Yeah, she is. She is. There's not. some movies she's got with Ben Affleck, I think, too, where she's shows her goods. That yeah, that's Dark Water. Oh, is that and Dark then, Water? Oh. She was also in uh, that that movie uh, Knock Knock with uh, Keanu Reeves. No. Yeah, where they tie him up and and do things to him. <laughs> I don't. I don't know why they think that's scary. Oh, Anna Darmas is coming on to me. Oh, right, spooky. <laughs> Anywho, this one's for long. I couldn't believe. Uh, I was like, I saw this fact, and I, I was like, I'm putting this in here for long. Hopefully, he's listening. 1988, the Naked Gun movie, based off of TV's Police Squad premieres. I mean, that's right up Long's alley. Come on, Long. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean. There was something, I don't know. I came across something the other day, that, an article that mentioned Leslie Nielsen. Maybe it was just something random, and I saw some headline. I don't even remember what it was now, but, uh, you know, hey, I mean, it was, a, it was a fun movie, you know. I haven't done a whole lot of birthdays uh, lately, um, so I made sure to, to to find some notable birthdays, and, and some of the ones I found, uh, Frank Sinatra, uh, Bob Barker, Jennifer Connelly, Kristen Ritter, and the great Walt Disney um, all have birthdays this month. Yeah, Bob Barker just turned 99. Yep. I saw him, uh, and a contestant wanted him to say his line from uh, from Happy Gilmore. <laughs> and uh, Kristen Ritter, we got to uh, meet at Comp Palooza a couple years ago and have our photo taken with her. That was cool. Yep. And, um, you know, I, I mean, I hope they... If the MCU brings back any more street characters. I hope they bring back her as Jessica Jones because she was good in that role. I yeah, I think some some characters are well cast, and and Kristen Ritter was one of them, uh, obviously. And uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, if we get anything, we get her. Nineteen seventy nine Star Trek, another long one. <laughs> Motion picture, the first movie uh, premieres, and uh, you know, directed by Robert Weiss, starring William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy. Um, man, you know, good film, uh, obviously, uh, greenlit, uh, is it though? It was solid. It's okay. It's you, you want, boring. If you watch any of the Star Trek films, you want to watch the odd number. You want to watch the one, three, five. What? Who, no one ever says that two, four and six are better. Come on, Wrath of Khan is part two, man. Oh, maybe I have it backwards. Maybe yeah, it's, it backwards. maybe it's the even numbers that are better. Yeah, The even yeah. numbers are better, but I do like three. Because it ties into two, but it's yeah. not as good as two, but I still like three. But one, man, I mean, I don't know. They felt like, the you know, 
you come off the very popular TV show and they, they felt the audiences wanted serious sci-fi, like in the vein of 2001 space odyssey. And, and uh, it just didn't translate well with star Trek. It's not a bad movie, but it's just, it's not a fun star Trek movie. And I think that's the problem with the motion picture. Yeah. Um, I've only seen it once or twice over the years. Cause it's just kind of hard to watch. Uh, I think I watched it once years ago. Then when they did the remastered version a few years ago with the updated special effects, I watched it again. I'm just like, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty boring. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, I got a couple more movies that came out this month. Go, uh, 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 Thunderball came out this month, um, was released in, uh, well, it was technically the Japan release. Um, but, uh, you know, Hey, Thunderball, the fourth installment of Ian Fleming's 007. Um, I know I, I'm probably a bigger fan of this, um, of that movie than anyone on the, on the show. Um, but man, it's such an elaborate storyline. Um, and it's, it was one of the most complicated books. It's probably why it didn't do too hot. Um, but still got some cool stuff with the underwater fighting. And, uh, and of course the scene that, uh, gave the Austin powers ammunition for the, uh, that's not a woman. That's a man, baby. (laughs) So, um, Stanley Kubrick, 1971, X-rated film, A Clockwork Orange, based on the book by Anthony Burgess and starring Malcolm McDowell premieres. Oof. I don't know. I've seen parts of it. It's a weird movie. It is a fucked up film. I know. I'm sorry. We, we, you know, some movies are are messed up, uh, but this one is effed up. Yeah. um, There's, they're raping people for fun. He's pretending to be a gentleman. There's like, you know, there's a lot of... Weird shit in there. Most of Kubrick's films aren't, you know, really accessible to the masses. I mean, Full Metal Jacket might be the only one. Yeah, probably. Um, but most of his movies are just like, I don't know. Nah, I'm not a fan. I've never been a big fan of his. Like 2001 Space Odyssey, those are just weird science fiction movies. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's he's a bit bizarre director. Um, you know, and, you know, I know we celebrated, uh, birthdays, but, you know, we also, you know, somberly, um, remember, uh, those that we lost in, in December. Um, and I know I've mentioned, uh, Walt Disney, he had a birthday this month. He also died in the same month. Um, mm-hmm. so not long after he celebrated his last birthday, he, uh, he passed away in December. Um, also, uh, you know, I will say, you know, I know it's sports, but you know what? He's in video games too, and that's John Madden. John Madden passed away uh, last year, this month. No, I was saying so, it was about a year ago. Yeah. yeah, so so rip rip to the great John Madden. Um, also, last year we lost Betty White, um, and uh, I know every, we're all cheering to see how long um, you know she would uh, she would last. Um, yeah. And so rip Betty White, um, Paul Walker. Um, he was right on the cusp of. I felt like I had to include him because it was November 30th. The next day was December 1st. I didn't include him last, last month, which I, you know, I absolutely would have, um, you know, that, that was heartbreaking. And of course, um, the greatest loss that I feel like, you know, we, we've lost in the past few years. Um, Carrie Fisher passed away in, in December of, uh, 2016. Um, so rip, rip to the princess. Um, you know, obviously her, her work speaks for, itself uh you know we've talked a lot about her on the show and yeah. that reminds that, me i was watching james home bob strike back the other day yeah and i didn't include my download this because i always include my old movies but i always laugh at that scene at the beginning where she's in it and jay's like oh you follow the book too she's like i live my whole life by the book and he puts his head down there to laugh and she's throwing about the car uh-huh. it's hilarious <laughs> Remember George Carlin's talking, it tells him about the book. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then he may run into her. Oh, um, man. The book of the road. <laughs> oh, that's oh, pretty man. funny. Yeah, man. Uh, she, had, <laughs> she had some cameos in a couple, a couple of those films. She was, we talked about Austin Powers. She was in the second Austin Powers as the, uh, as the therapist. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Right. Just, <laughs> Good just real funny. Um, so that's this month in, in television history. Pop culture, history. yeah, pop culture, yeah. good stuff, man, good stuff. All right, well, let's let's get to the news, man. Um, man, what is going on at Warner Brothers in DC? Okay, so Henry Cavill's out, no longer Superman. Apparently, 
Gal Gadot might be out too as Wonder Woman, even though it's not confirmed yet. Patty Jenkins, though, is definitely out of as on Wonder Woman three, and she released yeah. a statement saying that she never quit the project; that she's basically been moved aside. Um, I guess the only good news out of that is that her Rogue One, her Rogue Squadron movie is not dead yet. She is; they are still developing at Lucasfilm now. She did kind of confirm that it's not guaranteed it's going to get made, but mm-hmm. it's still in development. Um, James Gunn apparently is writing a new Superman movie about a young Superman and. Uh, as they plan out this next eight to 10 years of the DC universe, there were rumors that Pattinson Batman was going to be included in the DCU, which James Gunn nixed that to Matt Reeves universe is his own thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I know the adage is to be patient, see what Gunn and them have planned, but at the same time, it looks like a big mess and fans aren't happy. They're not happy that Cavill has been pushed to the side. You know, rumor is that, he quit the Witcher because he was come back as Superman, but that's also a rumor. There's also a word that he wasn't really a big fan of the, um, it's the right, the yeah. fighting, the harsh winter, uh, shoots in the snow and all the makeup and stuff. And just the long shoots, you know, Cavill seems like he liked doing films more where he works for 30 days. It doesn't seem like he was a big fan of, you know, three, four months shoots doing a TV mm-hmm. show. So there's a lot more to that story too. Um, but you know, I, Here's my thing about James Gunn. I've enjoyed the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Don't get me wrong. I thought Suicide Squad was okay. But I don't feel he has enough track record, me personally, to trust in what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Um, And and I think that's what the fans are looking for, some trust behind this. Because now we have three movies coming out in 23 with Shazam, Aquaman, and The Flash that feel like, are there any point to them if they end up rebooting this whole thing? Um, now, to be fair, none of them haven't said they're rebooting everything, but when all of a sudden you announce that Cavill's not your Superman, it certainly feels like you're rebooting everything. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to hold out hope, and, and it's because I really like the DC Universe a lot. I enjoy what we get from Marvel, but I've always been a DC guy. Batman's my favorite superhero. I um, I, I really enjoy the anthology of Superman and who he is, and just some great science fiction characters like the flash and green lantern, a lot of great characters in DC. So I want to see this universe succeed, but I also feel like you could have saved what was there. I don't feel reboots necessary. Um, and that's where I stand on it. I'm trying to hold out hope and faith. And maybe a few years from now, I'll look back on this and think, okay, we got what we wanted, but it feels like a mess right now. Yeah. We're supposed to get Kavil versus black Adam, man. Right. I mean, they, they had him, Cameo at the end of Black Adam <coughs> announced on his Instagram that he was back. And now a couple months later, he's like, sorry guys, I'm not playing Superman. I got yeah. shafted. I feel like, I think, uh, I think I saw where, you know, some people are speculating that it's a power struggle right now between the rock and, uh, and James Gunn. I saw that too. And the rock was pretty furious about that. Reed oh, report. Yeah. He was not happy. Cause he said, no, me and Gunn aren't fighting. This is ridiculous. You know, but I can feel how The Rock feels upset, too, because basically they're basically kicking him out, too. Like, mm-hmm. you know, Black Adam, no more Black Adam. So, oh, man, that's it's nuts, man. And Black Adam did decent, you know. Yeah. Everyone everyone liked uh, the Justice Society. Uh, Pierce Brosnan as Dr. Fate was great casting. I think they, they casted, uh, you know, Hawkman uh, really well. And, uh, you know... I don't think the rock was bad as black Adam, you know, maybe it was a little cheesy, his, right. you know, one liner stuff. Um, but you know, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I don't have a problem yeah, but I'm it. less upset about the rock, not playing black Adam than Cavill because Cavill, you know, he did man of steel. He was kind of, um, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like he didn't get a chance to fully bring the role full circle, you know, with only a few appearances and, and he truly yeah. loved being Superman. If you, Look out there on the internet, all the pictures he took with kids and playing Superman and visiting the hospitals, things like that. He really embraced the role of being a hero and, uh, and he won't get to do it anymore, unfortunately, unless things yeah. change again. Cause there is already an internet campaign about bring back a bill. So we'll see, man, people have uh, listened before, you know, that's how we got Sonic the way to look the way we wanted him to look. Right. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Um, God of war. The very popular video game series has been is going to been ordered a series at Amazon on Amazon Prime. That's going to be fun. So we um 
you know, it feels like, you know, Amazon sitting there watching HBO coming out with their last of us, like, Hey, we need a big video game TV series, you know? And it feels too, like maybe the studios are getting it right. Video games are eight to 10 hours of playtime with epic stories. They're not always designed for a two hour movie, you know? So maybe TV shows are the way to go with these things where you can flesh out the story and tell them the right way. Yeah. And, uh, space it the out. last, if the last of us is very successful and God of War is very successful, might start seeing more video games turned into TV shows. Um, the very popular My Hero Academia live action film has been bought by Netflix and that will be coming to Netflix. Um, all that. That's really all that's been announced. It's just Netflix bought the rights for it. So we'll see how it turns out. Um, and lastly in the news, we got our first look this week at the brand new trailer for Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. Um, and uh, it was quite a good trailer, man. I, uh, I The first movie... Is a, is a blast, and, and uh, I I I think we'll we'll cover it this summer or before the new one comes out. And uh, yeah. looking forward to uh, Cross Spider-Verse. Really good trailer. Um, lots of lots of quick shots in there. Lots of Spider-Man appearing. You got to really watch the trailers to catch them all. Looks like some new animation techniques in it, and uh, definitely looking forward to that. High on my list of twenty twenty three to see. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's all the news, man. Um, so next week. We are going to do our year ending episode uh, where we will uh, talk our, we have our annual Batman movie, which I'm going to introduce here in just a second. We will uh, also discuss our favorite movies of the year and some pop culture moments. Uh, you, our usual year ending show next week on the show. Yeah. But the final movie of 2022 will be The Dark Knight Rises. You are as precious to me as you were to your own mother and father. I swore to them that I would protect you, and I haven't. The mayor's gonna dump him in the spring. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. But he's a hero, a war hero. This is peacetime. You think this can last? There's a storm coming, Mr. Wayne. Friends better batten down the hatches. Cause when it hits, you're all gonna wonder how you ever thought you could live so large and leave so little for the rest of us. What does that mean? Rise. permission to die. So we've already covered Batman Begins and The Dark Knight, so it's time to finish that trilogy out with The Dark Knight Rises this year. It was also the uh, 10th anniversary of that film this year, back this past summer. Um, So as we get Tom Hardy's Bane as the villain, along with Anne Hathaway's version of Catwoman, and uh, a good movie. Not Maybe not as, you know, some people say it's not as good as as The Dark Knight, but I I don't know, man. I think it's it's right up there. I think it's... uh, Yeah, I think it's... um, a pretty solid fucking Batman film and a good way to end the trilogy. I, and uh, so looking forward to talking that next week, along with the, uh, like I said, our year in our year in review, year ending uh, conclusion for 2022 on next week's show. Another, another movie with cool quotes. You think <laughs> darkness is your ally. <laughs> That's what it matches what you do his main voice. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> but um, so, you know, we, we started that tradition kind of by, um, I, mean, I don't know if we did it on purpose doing a Batman movie at Christmas about 
four years ago, and and, uh, and we we've, we've done it ever since. I think last yeah. Christmas our Batman movie was Batman Begins, and and uh, people think, oh, you're gonna run out of Batman movies. And there's plenty of animated films we haven't done. I Absolutely. I was looking, we got a solid six seven years more Batman movies <laughs> that we can do. So and uh, so we're good. We'll, we'll make it. Um, but that's next week's show, The Dark Knight Rises, and and until then. Um, continue to be safe. The rebel radio podcast.com for all your rebel radio needs. And of course, we're on all the apps to listen to the show. So it's easy to find us. And uh, we thank you as always for listening. This has been Mark. This has been Matt until next week. Remember as always, just go there and do it. it.